Pneumonia, for instance, used to be called the old man's friend because it would actually finish you off if you were old and you needed to die because your life was drawing to a close. It would finish you off. But nowadays we all get given an injection which actually probably reduces the chances of you getting the old man's friend. Assisting someone to die is illegal. Yes, it is illegal. That's why people have to go to Switzerland for it, if they've got the money and if they're able to go. I'm actually registered with one of the Swiss clinics in advance of ever needing it. Um, but they recently closed their book, so to speak, because they now have so many people potentially lined up who could come, they could not accept any more. When I first joined the old Voluntary Euthanasia Society in 1978, uh, no country had legalised assisted dying. They think it's vote loser. And if you're, in a, if you're in a marginal seat, it is a vote loser. Because it's small, noisy groups of very atypically religious people who have called the shots quite a long time. The people who can actually lobby Parliament and RMPs are the more traditional religious groups and so on and they actually have the money to do the lobbying, whereas smaller groups like ours don't have that background. In the case of people with severe chronic illnesses which are completely destroying their quality of life, uh, they also cost the country a vast amount of money. I'm in my 70s. We are the first generation who are probably watching their elderly um, mothers, fathers, aunts and uncles actually having their lives prolonged beyond what anyone would want. And that happened to my mother. She did not want to be kept, her life to be prolonged. And it just had to be prolonged. And it had to carry on because no one was allowed to let her die. When I qualified, it was still quite normal for doctors to speed things up a bit discreetly. It still happens, but it's much more difficult now. What they did in the secrecy of the sick room, and the bedroom, was very different from what you can do when you've got a team of people dealing with it. She wasn't much of a religious woman, but at the very end, her last words, and it took her a lot of time to say this because she was gasping for breath, her last words were, I must have been very wicked in my life for God to punish me like this before he'd let me die. It would be right to allow people to take their own decision. That confirmed it for me. My particular interest is in uh, the very difficult problem of dementia. Increasing numbers of people get it as, as we live longer and longer. And Nobody, hardly anybody in Britain wants to be kept alive in a state of severe dementia, but that, that is what happens to most of them. You have to make a decision to go to Switzerland, or if you're a doctor, do it yourself, uh, before you lose the capacity for making the decision. I mean, I have been on a training course to find out how to kill myself efficiently, if I can't get to Switzerland. I'm, I'm a confirmed believer <laughs> advocate of the right to die. Um, but of course it's a huge change. It's a huge change to bring about in society. Therefore it's going to take some time. In Western society we have fought long and bitterly for the right of people to have their own views and to express them. It's, and religion has usually fought equally strongly to prevent us from having that freedom, which is why I don't like it. I have very little doubt that change will come here eventually. I'm just not sure it will happen in my lifetime still.